Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Travel Mug Podcast. So we've had um, an exciting few weeks here. I mean, things are happening. So last week we were guests on an episode of a podcast that's upcoming, Wake Up with Jenny and Friends. So that was a new experience for me. Although Jen, you have been a guest before, haven't you? I have. I was a guest before we had a podcast on Rope Drop Radio and we've had Derek and Doug on our show from Rope Drop Radio, which was really fun. But I remember the first time I was on their their podcast, I was like sweating buckets. <laughs> like I was so freaking nervous but it was a really fun experience and if you are into disney you should check out rope drop radio and look for us on wake up with jenny and friends that was fun too. i know i was really nervous too like i totally get it and i was thinking like i didn't know if i had enough to say or and like people are probably like duh but i just really felt like maybe i wouldn't know what to say but her style was really cool because she just kind of played off like what we said and she was very good with like follow-up questions so it was a really great experience I highly recommend also last week we released our very first travel tip Tuesday so we're coming at you with something new each week which I mean is super exciting it was an idea that Jen had and I think it's awesome because it just fills in the weeks where we're not with a full episode yeah yes I love it they're very useful. I'm very excited. Indeed. So we hope you guys listen to our travel tip Tuesday. It's like a quick four or five minutes, just something to get you through and hopefully a tip that's helpful. But today's episode, so we want to chat about people, um, how people actually go about deciding where to travel, or if you know you want to travel, but aren't sure where to pick really just undecided in general. We hope you'll find some of the ideas useful in that decision-making process. I know that kind of sounds foreign to me because I'm always like, well, I know where I want to go, but not everybody everybody operates like that. People are much more whimsical than you or I, so they may not know. So what are we going to talk about first in terms of like how to help people decide? Yeah, I think what we're really talking about is like inspiration, right? Like where we find it yeah. and where you might find inspiration. I know I've had a bucket list that I've been adding to and crossing things off of since I was like a teenager. So, but these are some places that we get inspiration. And the first uh, thing I want to talk about is TV shows. So I love TV. I love watching shows and there's lots of travel specific shows as well. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Departures. It's an Canadian travel show. It's over 10 years old at this point, but I still love it so, so much. So it's three Canadians. They travel all over the world. They visit some offbeat places like North Korea, Madagascar, Greenland, Ethiopia, many, many others. Also more not off the beaten path as well. Right, right, right. Um, What I really liked about it is like they grew so much as individuals, especially one of the um, guys that's on it, Justin. He seemed really like immature, right? Like when the show started and over the three seasons, you kind of get to watch him like grow up. I mean, I think they are probably in their like mid mid-ish 20s when they started this show so it's it kind of like us on this podcast people uh, are just gonna watch us grow right up just go right up <laughs> I know. Um, and they really got to know like what I really liked also is they really got to know like people and the cultures they visited so they spend a lot of time with locals and they're really like respectful of the places that they visit it's probably my favorite travel show ever ever awesome. love it so the next one I would talk about is Rick Steves Europe. So Rick I Steve- just have to say we have eight episodes of this on our DVR just waiting to watch. Love Rick Steves. <laughs> we bought the DVD, like a DVD package. I don't know, Did probably really? four, four or five years ago with like all the shows. So when we right. were like, like last year when we thought we were going to go to Ireland in June of 2020. You're so silly. <laughs> we watched like all of the Ireland episodes. Anyway, he he writes guidebooks, but then he also has TV shows and they're all Europe based. Obviously it's called Rick Steve's Europe. And when they talk about local spots to stay and eat as well as what to do when you're there. Some of the shows are older, like some of them are filmed in like the nineties, but still gives you some inspiration. And I love it so much. The next one I want to talk about, we just finished on Netflix and it's called travels with my father. So it is a father and son traveling the world together. The father is in his seventies. The son is in his thirties. He is a comedian. So he is very funny. And the the sun is a bit wild. They get up to some crazy stuff. Yeah. It's just kind of a fun, like heartwarming show watching the father son dynamic and also seeing some really cool um, places in the world. 
And then the last one is Down to Earth with Zac Efron and Darren Olean. And they kind of travel around and they they do more like sustainable travel. And they kind of focus on finding like sustainable ways to live, I guess. They see lots of other cultures. I loved watching them in Iceland because I was like, I yeah, was me too. There. That's the one we've watched. That's the one we've watched. <laughs> <laughs> All good shows. I, there are lots and lots of others, but those are my favorites. What do we got next? Awesome. I just wanted to add actually a couple that I wanted to, yeah. to mention. And the only two that, that I wanted to add to an already great list is of course, Parts Unknown, which was Anthony Bourdain's show yeah. on CNN. I loved it, loved it, loved it with all my heart. And the other one that actually inspired us to go to Iceland, it's not on any longer on CNN either, but I'm sure you can find it. And it's called The Wonder List. It's with Bill Weir. While I was in Iceland, I like tweeted him and said, we're in Iceland right now because of you, blah, blah, blah. And he actually wrote back and said how cool he thought that was and stuff. So yeah. So those are the two that have sort of been inspirations for us in regards to TV shows, but it's a really great list. And I think it really can sort of open your mind to places you might not have considered. Next, I wanted to talk about Pinterest. So I honestly think a lot of people, and I mean, I have in the past as well, before I knew better or more was only for like recipes and nail polish ideas, which I really do use it for those things. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> But there is so much more to Pinterest, including a big part of it being travel. Mm -hmm. So bloggers, like both of us, bloggers, podcasters, all alike, they sort of use it as a means to get their work out there into the world. So whether it's advertising their latest blog posts, it can also be a really great resource, especially if you're trying to decide between a few places. So on Pinterest, you can find what they call, of course, pins, which take you to websites pertaining to pretty much anywhere could be blog posts, could be YouTube channels, can really just help you by searching place names. I've done that in the past, brought up some great articles. I've used it to share our travel blog. I know you have as well, but again, also to do research and really have gotten some great ideas. So for Iceland and Ireland, got great ideas there. Also not us ideas, but like lots of tip articles too. So like what you need to think of before you go, those kind of things for people who've returned. Super, super helpful. Yeah. Um, you can also create a board of stuff on Pinterest if you're not familiar with it. So you can sort of store all your Ireland posts in one place or whatever the case might be, just so it's, you can go back and easily find the things that you've actually saved and revisit at a later date. Mm-hmm. I just overall find it helpful. How have you used it, Jen? Yeah, it's very similar to to you. So I was going to say like Pinterest, it's a it's a visual search engine. So you kind of think of it as Google, but all of the things that you search for come up as images. So sometimes you see something like, oh, that's really cool, like a view from a hike or like, you know, a town square, or like something really cool. And sometimes it's like, here's like things that you need to know before you visit somewhere. It has so much so much information you can find a ton of stuff and the being able to save it I think is key because then you can go back to it because how many times do you like read something and then you close that window and then like a week later you're like oh no where did I see that where was that yeah (laughs) yeah no I completely agree and just as an FYI for people you'll soon be able to find the travel on podcast on Pinterest so keep your eyes open for that and follow us there all the places all the the places places. we're going to be everywhere (laughs) we are indeed up in your grill so where can we else can we find some inspiration Jen so this goes with Pinterest of course and it's travel blogs because Pinterest is going to be probably how you find a lot of travel blogs I love reading about other people's experience visiting places I think that you get a lot of insight from a travel blog or someone who's been there versus just like a list of like, here are the things that you can do in this city. You just get a little bit more personal. So you kind of get like a blend of like story and advice. And you know, sometimes you find like a travel blog where you really like that person and you kind of keep coming back yeah. and, and reading their stuff. So obviously I'll tell you about a few of my favorites, which is mine and Megan's. <laughs> Necessarily, of course. of course. So we'll save for travel and let's get tripsy. If you haven't read us, we're there. I do want to mention Practical Wanderlust. Leah was on an episode, I don't know, a, a handful of episodes back, I guess now, chatting about yeah. her book and her blog. And uh, she has a lot of great information. I also really like Two Drifters. They're really great. And then I have to mention Nomadic Matt, who's like, an OG travel blogger and has been doing this 
forever. He has guides to like almost anywhere that you want to go. So lots oh, cool. of great information there. People just out there living their dreams. Just out there doing their thing. All right. How do it. you plan trips? I need to know. This is, yes. And this is probably our, our biggest. And I know I've probably mentioned it in passing before, but I just a little bit more in depth and it may seem like Duh. But I don't think everybody probably does it this way. So we use Google Maps as sort of the basis for most of our trip planning. Like Peter calls it, I think, let's bring up the big board. I literally think he says that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> let's just storyboard our trip here on the big board so and this is usually I have to say like when we have a country destination already in mind so this is more sort of drilling down a little bit but really what we do is we just literally open the map to the country with hopefully a few basic ideas in mind of at least where we'd like to start so with that starting point we honestly just pick a direction whatever we're feeling which way do we want to go and then we explore by typing in landmark hotel or just zooming in and out on the map because there's so many things added to Google Maps now that when you zoom in sort of just populate for you. And so we utilize that uh, feature a lot. We also use it to pick out a reasonable amount of driving time stops along the way. Although of course you do need to leave time, Jen, for unexpected stops. You what? never. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> I don't understand extra time that wasn't planned, but you really just need to leave that time because you honestly don't know. Believe me in Iceland, Peter wanted to pull over every five minutes and my anxiety started to like rise. And he's just like, you don't know if we're coming back here, man. We have to like stop and see this stuff. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. Like, you talk me down here. And also too, of course, we've even used it for cities. Let's say our destination was A to B, but needed somewhere in between to eat pick a random spot, zoom in, do it that way. Plus it provides, of course, ratings, reviews for the stuff that you want to do. It's kind of like all in one in regards to that. And also another great thing, of course, much like Pinterest, where you can go back, we end up using Google Maps as well to star things for future reference. So whether it's the landmarks, restaurants, calculate that driving time. I don't want to spend my vacation driving 10 hours a day either. Yeah. So that's how it can be really useful um, to breaking it up into smaller chunks. It really does make it more enjoyable. And Peter usually does most of the driving. So I kind of try to keep that in mind too. I just have to sit there, but he has to use like the brain power all the time. And I do want to say like, as an example too, when we were booking Iceland and Ireland, we mapped it all out on Google maps. And when we used booking.com to reserve our rooms, we then went back to Google Maps and start those locations as well. So even if you're not sort of booking through there or going to sites off of that, make sure you come back so that your trip is kind of holistically in Google Maps because you can download offline maps. You don't have to have Wi-Fi. Right. So before you go, download the offline map of that country. It will save all the hard work you put into trip planning. And then you can access that along the way. I mean... I can't imagine now planning any trip without using Google Maps as our base. That's a, like, I've never used Google Maps to plan a trip. So it's just really interesting, like the different uh, methods. But I love the idea, especially of like a road trip based trip of like mapping it out and then downloading it. So you have it offline. So you have it yeah. with you. Um, that's very key for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a really great idea and not something that I've done. So I'm sure there's lots of other people out there that have learned that trick. Yeah. No, it's super useful. Yes. What's next? All right. Next. I love TV. I also love books. So same, same <laughs> reading. And you can definitely find inspiration in books and not just in travel guides. Although I love a travel guide. It's really funny. I pick, I always pick them up at like secondhand stores or even if it's a place that I'm like, I don't know if I'll go there. I kind of just like <laughs> flipping. You don't know. <laughs> um, but you can also find inspiration in fiction books as well. And I did want to mention one that's had an impact on me is Dan Brown's Robert Langdon series, which a lot of people are familiar with. It's the Da Vinci Code, it's Angels and Demons. You know, they're all mostly major motion pictures now, but in each book, he, Robert Langdon visited different cities. So like Vatican City, Rome, Paris, Washington, DC, Florence, a bunch of places, and I find that Dan Brown really describes the places 
all, it almost seems like you're standing there. Like the way he describes wow. like the, the surroundings, I almost feel like I'm standing in that place. So I love it so much. And it's made me want to visit all of the places <laughs> that have been. Right, in- right, right. I was so close to being in Rome. So, so <laughs> close friends. But I can't wait to see the places for myself. I'm sure there are other books. Of course, when I was, you know, writing our, our outline, I just completely blanked on like all of the things, but I'm sure there's lots of other books. And I can't, I'm sure for people who enjoy reading, I also love it. I'm sure when they've read a book and envisioned a place through a book, a lot of people have felt the same. So I'm sure that, you know, people are out there reading and probably getting inspiration like that. So I think it's definitely valid because I love when I'm reading to picture it in my head. I, I want to really try to be there. So that makes a lot of sense that that could just sort of inspire someone because if you envision enough in your head, you're probably going to go online and be yeah. like, what does this place really look like? Do I want to go there? Yeah, I love that. Me too. All right. So again, a topic we've discussed, but I think for this in particular is very, very key travel agent or travel planner advice. So really who knows better than a travel professional? Certainly not me. (laughs) Certainly not me. No. So we have had uh, travel advisor, Christina on a past show as well as Ken Nickerson from Trafalgar. And even though we knew it already, both of those conversations really taught me and brought to light that the travel industry professionals are the experts. It is the way to go. And if you aren't sure where you'd like to go or where you could go with the budget you have, because I think that's what a lot of people uh, consider as well. They're like, well, I have this much money, like where could I travel to? And I really do think that the travel uh, professionals have insights, knowledge, expertise, really on where you can get to for the price. Plus they take a lot of the headaches off the table that we've discussed. So being on hold, et cetera. I mean, they have even oftentimes traveled to these places. So they have that on the ground knowledge. So after all that we've been through in these past, like almost two years, peace of mind while traveling, I really think is going to be a big one for people and honestly feel that they could bring you that in terms of the peace of mind and help you plan a trip that's right for you. I know when we were speaking with Jenny on the podcast last week, we were talking sort of about that mental health health aspect. And I was saying how just traveling is going to be a help for mine, yeah. but it's also interesting to see the flip side where it probably will make people really anxious. And I can understand that a hundred percent. So I think that travel experts will be able to help with that in yeah. terms of discovering where you want to go, planning your budget, and also peace of mind. But you found a company that I thought was really, really interesting. In America, I'm sure there's something maybe that exists like this in Canada too, but why don't you talk about that? Yeah. So the company I found is called Pack Up and Go. And so they plan a trip for you. You give them your budget and like information about yourself and how much time you have and where you're based out of and then they plan a trip for you. But the the catch being, you don't know where you're going until like a few days before your trip. What in the what? Um, <laughs> yes, like that. I think it's a few days before. I don't think it's the airport. It might be at the airport. I don't know. I guess they'd maybe they tell you what time to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you'd have to have a little bit of info. I mean, yeah, I think they give you like a packing list or like something that you would do. But like, it's funny, I've discovered this a company a few like but pre-pandemic and I was like this is really cool like I as much as I am a planner and I love planning trips I think this would be really fun and I I would do this if they offered something out of out of Halifax airport I think I would do would like especially like a short weekend you know four-day getaway or something like that I don't know if I'd let them plan like a two-week vacation for me but I (laughs) That's not surprising. Like a, a weekend getaway, I think I would do that. And I think it would be really cool. What did you what do you think, Megan? Would you do it? I mean, I agree. Like I I don't want to give, you know, up my budget for two weeks and have a plus my vacation time and then be like, what? But yeah, like maybe a shorter getaway. Okay, maybe we'll be adventurous someday if this ever comes our way. Yeah. Look at us go. Yeah. <laughs> Make good show content anyway. <laughs> If we're doing it for the podcast, if nothing else. (laughs) So the next thing we're going to talk about next inspiration place is social media, like Instagram, Facebook. Like we can't 
leave out social media and like the effect that it has on all of us. Right. And who hasn't seen like an amazing photo and been like, I want to go there. I need to book a flight to there right now. Right. So like Instagram, there's hashtags that you can search. Like, I mean, hashtag travel will bring you like probably a billion different (laughs) results, right? You can kind of see where people go through Instagram. I will say during the pandemic, when I was missing travel so, so much in the beginning stages of the pandemic, I found this place called Mackinac Island in Michigan. And it is an island. There are no cars. You take a fairy there. I'm obsessed. I want to go there so bad. It looks so freaking cute. I mean, obviously they're tourist season in the summer, but people do live there year round and they drive snowmobiles to school. Like it's just, oh my God, it looks so beautiful and like idyllic and just, I want to go there so, so bad. I can't wait to go there. And where did you find them? Like on social media? On social media. I don't even know like where like if someone I follow posted it, I can't even remember like how I found it. I saw a picture on Instagram and I was like, where is this place? And right. then I started following a whole bunch of their like tourist accounts. Cause I was like, I want to go here so bad. Mackinac. What else can I learn about Mackinac? Please, I was <laughs> obsessed, obsessed. <laughs> this was like May, 2020. So I had nothing else yeah. to do. <laughs> Those were some sad times. Yes. I I've also found some, you know, cool places in Nova Scotia as well. The glamping domes that we did Archer's Edge. I found them on Instagram. Yep. The burnt coat head. I think we talked about that a few episodes ago. Really cool. Did that, found that on Instagram and balancing rock. I think I knew about it. And then I saw it on Instagram. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to go there. Yeah. So you can definitely find places like even close to where you live. Doesn't have to be you know, some random island that doesn't have cars and is super cute. But those aren't bad either. No, 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 not bad. <laughs> but when I think of Mackinac, there was an episode of Seinfeld where they had this big deal. It was the Mackinac peach that it only was ripe at a certain time of year. Anyway, it's a whole episode, but I'm now I'm wondering the Mackinac peach from this Mackinac Island. Oh, now I have to go like, go find yeah. out. Like, just some research. We've just uh, started rewatching Seinfeld on Netflix recently. Now that it's on the Netflix, you will you will think you will know I it know. when you see it. <laughs> so next, I want to talk about not something I've already always done, but something we've started probably in the last three or four years, and that's watching YouTube travel vloggers. We've talked about the vloggers. Now we're going to talk about the vloggers. Now. Before I dive in, do you have sort of any that you watch on the regular, anything like that? I would say the only one I watch on the regular is called the Tim Tracker. And he is like mostly Disney and like Florida based. They sometimes like they've done California and they've done some overseas Disney parks. They're the only ones that I follow. Like they put out a video almost every day. Like Oh they goodness. go to the dis they go to like not just Disney but Universal, SeaWorld, Legoland, like all of the theme parks in Florida. But yeah, those are the that's the only family I follow vlogging on gotcha. YouTube. Yeah. Yes. And there really is a vlogger for every person. <laughs> like there's such a wide variety of there. And some are highly edited, really flashy. Some travel to dangerous places, sort of just to give us an insight of somewhere we likely would never go. Um, And then there's just regular people out there sort of traveling the world or different regions that fascinate them and then really just sharing them with us. And I don't think personally you need all the glitz and glam or the perfect dialogue. That's my preference, but there's definitely something for everyone. If you love highly edited, et cetera, that's out there too. So it really just depends on what you want. We have watched a variety of blogs prior to trips just by literally Googling the place we were going. I've gotten some great insight. One thing I find though, is we try not to watch too close to the trip because I'm like, ah, I want to see it with my own eyes. Like yeah. I don't want to... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I don't want to get there and like, yeah, I saw that on YouTube. But we do follow three uh, vloggers regularly as they travel the world and whatnot. It really does and has give us, given us an insight into places that fascinate us. Some we'd never travel to these places. Other places I never really would have thought of it. And, other, and sometimes I'm like, oh my God, we have to go there. <laughs> like, especially European countries that are more like Jordan or Georgia or other places like that. It's really been interesting. Plus they can give you an insight into culture, 
the cost of things, hotel room costs. I love seeing what people eat. I am all about the food. Show me the, show me your food and then put how much it costs on the screen and you have me. (laughs) I love it. I'm in. So our three go-tos are first and foremost, Gabriel Traveler. He's American and Canadian. We actually found him in Iceland. We were in a city and we just wanted to understand maybe what we could do a little bit more there. So we Googled it on YouTube. That's not how you do it. We we researched (laughs) it on YouTube. I guess we Googled it on YouTube. Anyway, and he just popped up. And so ever since that, we liked his video. He had been in our, the city we were in. So then when we came home, we just kind of started watching him regularly. He used to be budget travel, but now he makes more money on YouTube. So, so his, his accommodations have gotten better. He yeah. drinks wine with dinner now. So <laughs> he's not yeah. as many youth hostels or eating yogurt out back of the grocery stores like he used to, but we still like him. Yes. The other one is Harold Balder. So he is Norwegian. He travels to a lot of places like I may never go there and he does hikes. I would never survive, but he does give amazing insights. He really integrates himself with the culture, the people. He even goes to work sometimes with people to show you sort of what as a tourist you're seeing, what's the other side of it. I love that. Like he went, he was in Brazil recently. He went to work with someone who sells like acai ice cream along one of the famous boardwalks there and like what that actually means. And it was, it's really incredible. And it gives you a better appreciation a for your own life, but B when you're on trips for the people that are actually doing the jobs while you're there. Yeah. So that one's really important. And then finally, the one we love, I would say I probably enjoy the most is Bald and Bankrupt. So he's British. His name's Benjamin. He started in 2018. He literally shot the fame so fast. Harold Balder actually introduced him to the YouTube world. Um, And he has, since 2018, amassed 3.21 million subscribers. And he spends a lot of his time in the former USSR um, in that region of Europe. He he speaks Russian. So it really does help learn about the culture. The people are always so kind and friendly. Some of the nicest people like I've ever witnessed who have so little. So his videos are really good and insightful and impactful. So those are just three that we watch. I really think, especially when you're not traveling as much, it can be really great to follow someone who is like, I've cursed them out a few times, like, damn you for being out there on the road. But it's also really great to sort of learn about other places, even if you'll never go there. Yeah, we've done a couple of like travel vlogs on the We'll Save for Travel YouTube channel yeah. of our travels. And not only, you know, it's out there for other people. Do I have 3.21 million subscribers? No, but I have like, you know, 15 Go me. Right. Go um, but it's also nice for, for us to kind of go back and like relive some of that trip, right? And and what you've done. So I, I think it's really cool. And I I I love YouTube. Like there's so many. You can find anything there. You really can. You can watch millionaire children now who unbox toys, but anyway, whatever. It's a weird, whatever. weird world out there. <laughs> <laughs> all right where what else can we do for inspiration inspiration talk to other people I know do I have to yeah I mean you don't have to we have all you can watch YouTube right but <laughs> we have our own podcast I could just talk to you exactly <laughs> <laughs> but talking to other people about their travel has definitely inspired me to to put things on my bucket list and I think people who like to travel also like to talk about their travels, right? Like (laughs) that's just kind of who we are as traveler people. And I I have a variety of people in my life who are are big travelers and and like to travel. And so I love chatting with them about their travels. I know my best friend's parents love to travel and have traveled quite a bit. And it's really fun. You know, we've gone over to their house and gone through like their photo albums from like the nineties and like talk to them oh about their trips, right? Sure. Like it's, it doesn't even have to be like the latest trip you've gone on. Like talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents about like places they've gone and, and, you know, let them share your stories or let, you know, let them share their stories <laughs> Same <laughs> well, days, yeah. or share your own stories, but it can, it's just a really great way to connect you know, with another person. And, and if it's someone that you don't know that well, like get to know them and also nice for like heritage reasons. Like, especially if your grandparents or great grandparents came from another country, right? Like it's, 
I mean, I, obviously, Megan and I love talking about travel. We do it on the podcast. Here we are. <laughs> but I also <laughs> enjoy doing it in my in my everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the most traveled person sort of outside of me and Peter in terms of in our lives directly in terms of family or whatever is Peter's aunt. She uh, She's been traveling since the 60s. She went to the former Soviet Union when it was still the Soviet Union or the USSR, I guess. Yeah. Um, when he was uh, first adopted, she actually mailed him a postcard. It was his first piece of mail ever. She was on a trip and it was uh, from Barbados mm -hmm. and she'd sent in this and he still has it to this day. Like, so her trips have actually been a part of his whole life. And so she's very, very, very well traveled. And you're right. Like, even if you're going to go somewhere and you know, people have gone there, go and chat with them before you yeah. go to, that's what we did before Iceland. I had a friend I worked with her and her partner had gone to Iceland and we just went over there and spent the evening. It was lovely anyway, but they just sort of gave us some insight. There was something funky about when you get to a gas station, how you have to start the pump. Like we never would have known. Right. We would have stood there like an idiot <laughs> trying to figure it out. So like even that one piece of information was valuable enough. So you're right. Like just chatting with people about their travels and people do like to talk about where they've been. So it's a great opportunity to sort of hear them. And even if you're not going there, it's, it's, it's still enjoyable. It is. All right. right, so let's finish things off with something um, that could be familiar, um, but something maybe you haven't thought about either. And that's exploring travel uh, booking websites or Google Flights. So Google Flights is like kind of newish to me. I'd say a couple of years ago, Peter brought it up on the computer. I'm like, what even is this? <laughs> um, but it's, it's a really cool resource. If you want to fly somewhere, you don't know where, but you know how much money you have because you can literally figure it out that way. So it's a great resource. If you're on a budget, how far is this money going to take me? Yeah. Um, so, and then you really could pick a random spot. I think it's really cool. And they have all the airline options and it can really maybe take some, you somewhere you never dreamed of. I mean, who knows? right? Uh, travel booking websites. So whether it's Kayak or Expedia, those sites have been around for a while, but maybe we're all a bit out of practice. Like we haven't really been booking stuff. I don't know if you know, um, but these are really great sites to help you pick a travel destination based maybe on your budget. Once you know a country, it can really help narrow things down, whether it be experiences, uh, car rentals or hotels. Airbnb actually has a, a section for experiences specifically. Yeah. So you don't, so you don't just have to book a room on there, or you can maybe try to find an experience first and then book around that something you never thought of either. So I think that, you know, those sites, while we just think of them, oh, I go there to book a hotel, they can actually provide probably a little bit more insight or inspiration there as well. Yeah. I think also I, I've mentioned this before, but I've used like travel tour websites to like, look at their itineraries and take <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, whatever. <laughs> if it's on the internet and you don't have, and you're not getting it by not paying for something, exactly. then that's, yeah, that's not your fault. No, it's posted there. So yeah, it's kind of, especially if you're planning like a road trip, it's kind of a good, cause they'll kind of give you an idea, like how much you can accomplish, right. in like that period of time. Cause yes, it's really great. I think they're a little sneaky option to yes. plan a little trip. So awesome. I think that's all of the tips that we have. And we want to know, like, how do you find places that you want to go to? So we'll have that question on Facebook and Instagram. So you can go answer us and maybe you have an amazing idea that we haven't thought of. So also, if you like this episode, please consider leaving us an Apple podcast review that helps people find us and share the show with a travel loving pal so we can talk to them about travel too. Mm -hmm. So check back next week for our second travel tip Tuesday. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.